this. Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, he's a corgi. And this is an episode of Conversations with a Corgi from the garden, where we are talking about flower essences. And the flower essences I use in my practice are from a company called Botanical Animal. And I am talking today about their product called Life Changes for loss of loved ones, moving, and sadness. And here's the bottle. And I have used this one a lot. It has a lot of applications in the lives of our pets and ourselves. And it's a pretty powerful remedy, as you'll see, or flower essence from the things that I will tell you about it today. In their basic information about life changes, it says, this is for facing dramatic changes like the loss of a loved one or being moved to a new home. Resolves issues of resentment, intolerance, alienation, isolation, jealousy, feelings of sadness, heartache, and depression. It revitalizes rescued animals and how many of us have rescued pets that may seem just a little off for the years and years that we have them. This could be the flower essence to help them really fully integrate in your family and become part of your life. It brings harmony and happiness to your home and your family and particularly to the pets that are using life's changes in their water or given to them in an eyedropper diluted um, to help them with either a move, loss of a loved one, or transitions and resentment and intolerance. So the components of this flower essence are several trees, including the European beech, also known as the common beech, the Pacific bleeding heart, and of course when we're talking about the loss of a loved one, anyone would expect to see the bleeding heart flower essence in that chrysanthemums, which have been used for centuries in ceremony and uh, at different times of year for a ritual, forget-me-nots with the loss of the loved one or a change of location. Who wouldn't want forget-me-not? And I have many beautiful tiny little blue flowers of forget-me-nots blooming on the front yard. And I think, I think all of the backyard ones have moved on. Um, but they are an interesting flower and of course a forget-me-not is essential for helping you feel comfortable in the situation that you're in. Everlasting P, and again that word everlasting, help keep those memories, help keep that connection. Uh, English walnut, another tree with really interesting properties. Um, pussy willows, and I learned a lot about willows that I didn't know that had a special significance for me and Pacific Poison Oak. So there's a lot of different flower essences and uh, plant essences in this particular um, one called Life's Changes from Botanical Animal. And as we look through these specific components, I think you'll get an understanding of how powerful and useful Life's Changes can be in your life for you and your pets. I was losing my corgi, he's damp. We've had a lot of rain here. The first one that is in this flower essence, oh poor Tristan, he's got wet mittens, is the European beech. And the European beech has been called the goddess tree. And it has um, a strong pos um, ability to decrease hair loss and improve hair growth. And for centuries, of course, um, hair has been associated with power and strength. Hence, we get the you know, stories of David and, Goli uh, uh, David and Goliath and Rapunzel and other stories of hair. So it's interesting, the European beach is associated with that. The nuts in particular are high in B6, and the leaves of the beach have been used in times of famine as food, and they are high in fiber and quite nutritious in a way. Um, you wouldn't want to eat them every day, but in a time of famine, because of their high fiber, they make you feel full and they impart, um, you know, some nutrition to you. And so therefore they've been associated with good digestion. Uh, the leaves when boiled can be useful for a headache. And this is true for several of the plants that we'll be talking about today. The bark is loaded with antioxidants and the seeds, although toxic by themselves, when dilute enough, 
have been shown to boost the kidney kidney function, clear out toxins, especially salt, waste, and water from the body. So therefore, it's a di diuretic, and therefore, it also increases metabolism. Um, it prevents neural tube defects. So for those listening who have Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, European Beach could be a really important thing to bring to your pregnant moms so that you can have a healthier neural tube and not get that defect they get at the base of their um, cranium and their spinal cord that so many Cavaliers are plagued with. So European Beach would be a really important flower essence to look into if you're a Cavalier breeder or if you have puppies or one that has problems. This would be an interesting thing to try. And as life's changes is associated with transitions, moving in sadness, part of what we'll see here with these specific um, components is that it has to do with the difference between being in heaven and being on earth. And that neural tube deficit may have something to do with wanting to be there, but being here and not being in your body. So life's changes might be a good one to try for Cavalier King Charles Spaniel in particular. Um, even if you don't have um, moving and things like that going on in your life, but just for the transition properties of this rem uh, essence between heaven and earth, this could be a good one. Um, it has antiseptic qualities, especially in the distilled bark. The roots are known to increase circulation of air in the soil, and that's true for several of the plants we're looking at today. And that increased circulation of air in the soil can be very much related to what's going on in our lives when we're facing moving, loss of a loved one, or a big transition. Because you are ungrounded, you are stuck in the past, you are unable to bring life and vibrancy to your situation. You just get bogged down. And so having a tree whose properties include bringing air and circulation to the soil can be replicated in you, bringing air and circulation and new life in a way into you or your pet's um, internal system when you use life's changes. Uh, the soil is really improved um, and as the growth of the trees around the tree from this property it has of bringing um, air to the soil. And the leaves stay on it through the winter. So it has this kind of everlasting quality. And because the leaves stay on the tree in the winter, it helps protect the baby trees under it so that they have a better opportunity to grow and thrive. And that's exactly what you need in the middle of a transition or a change in your life or the loss of a loved one, is some kind of protection that feels everlasting so that you can thrive and grow and move on from that experience. And you'll see that um, aspect in several of these plants that are in this. Uh, <clears throat> beach flower remedies are known to enhance uh, sympathy and tolerance, and they can signify death as well as a new beginning, and as well as that idea of transition. And when you think about it, moving, it feels like the, literally the rug has been pulled out from under you, especially if you're a pet and you don't understand what's going on. You know, maybe you're moving closer to your people's family, or maybe you're moving to a better environment, or more money, or a new job, or loved ones. And so for a dog who doesn't know what's going on, suddenly they see disruption in their world. And so that transition can actually be a good thing, but we don't always see that because we're stuck in the drama of the circumstance. Um, beech trees have been associated with crossing a threshold, and again, that transition between this plane, the earth plane, and the spirit plane. Um, they can serve as a link for us to see the relevance of our experience, and that's really important. Um, Hamlet said, there's nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And so if we have an experience that seems bad, but our interpretation of it is good, like, well, he's in a better place now, or thank God I'm not in that old house. If you have that um, experience and reference to put that in a good light, then the change can be positive. And uh, beach can really help as a flower essence to help you understand the meaning of that transition. And um, one of my friends, Bernie Siegel says, ask yourself, why is this happening for me as opposed to why is this happening to me? And you know, Many people have lots of pets, and sometimes they all pass over the Rainbow Bridge at the same time. And that's a time when you can say to yourself, why is this happening to me? 
but look at it instead as why is this happening for me? Look at all the spiritual lessons my animals are giving me in this time of transition. Look at all of the spiritual growth I'm going to have out of this experience. What new opportunities are going to come to me with new pets? How am I going to help other people who are facing the similar circumstance that I've just been through? So if you put a little spin on it and make it positive, then you can understand the experience better. And that really is our business here on the Earth Plane, is to understand our role in um, the cosmic scheme of things, like what is the lesson in the experiences around us, not whether that lesson is good or bad. So the beach, flower essence, is really powerful for dealing with transitions and death. It gives us knowledge through experience and revelation through experience. And again, it gets to that idea of nothing is good or bad, but how we think about it. So think about this as a good thing, as a transition, as a change. Um, I know in tarot, which is another ancient tradition, and there are actually even flower tarots, um, the death card is always seen as like, oh, bad thing. But in fact, many modern people who have rewritten tarot decks, there's many, many, many new ones, have used that death card to be a sign of transition, like the loss of your old job for a new job, loss of the old relationship, room in your life now for either a new relationship or new experiences and new work that could be really powerful. So death is part of a transition to something that's still going to be another learning experience and another good thing. No matter how bad it may look on the outside, there is a bigger picture that we need to see. And the beach imparts this in this flower essence for life's changes. And interestingly, many of the leaf structures of these plants that are in uh, life's changes are kind of long skinny ones with lots of little veins coming out. and. Um, I think that's kind of interesting because the length of the leaf is like the length of a life or a length of a spirit's experience and those little branches are like the experience that you're having along that life journey. So as I mentioned the next element of life changes is the Pacific Bleeding Heart which is a little more purple than the ones we have here on the East Coast. But of course Bleeding Heart is associated with breaking hearts and uh, feeling loss. The roots of this plant are used for pain relief, similar to the willow and the beech and some of the other things we'll be looking at. Many of these plants have pain relieving qualities. Um, it has a mind altering and a sedative effect. And in fact, bleeding hearts are related to poppies. So of course there is a mind altering effect. And if you remember in the Wizard of Oz, when they walk into the poppy field and everyone just feels happy and relieved and sleepy. And so the bleeding heart can help you process something that's really dramatic and difficult by making it a little more soft around you and your experience of it. It is known for its pain numbing qualities and it has been used to heal um, weakness that you have in your body from intestinal worms. And there is some stuff written about it being helpful for syphilis and some believe that the effect of syphilis is similar to Lyme disease because it really is a parasite in your body. And so bleeding heart, um, they're using, they're experimenting a lot on the parts of the bleeding heart to see if they can find new, um, you know, medical uh, miracles to save us from Lyme disease and some of these other things we have in our lives. The Native Americans um, use the rhizomes of it uh, to heal worms and parasitic conditions. And of course, what do the rhizomes of the bleeding heart look like? I just planted one so I can tell you, it looks like a pile of little skinny earthworms. And that gets us back to that Chinese idea of like healing like. So if you have intestinal worms, then perhaps using something that looks like worms will help heal that condition for you. And that is ancient wisdom, every culture um, historically has looked at that idea of like healing like and using something that looks like what you have wrong with you to help you because that makes sense. How would we identify what's gonna help us if we didn't have the way to look at it and say, hmm, this looks like worms, maybe it's good for worms. How else would we know? What, what's the opposite of something that looks like worms? You know, something solid, how would we know? So it's a, a lot of wisdom in this, um, things that are in the flower essences and in the plant wisdom that many traditions have recognized. Uh, bleeding heart is also known as a relief from extreme depression, really debilitating depression. And it's 
good for uplifting a weakened constitution, wounds of the broken heart in particular. And so you can see how this plant, this, this beautiful bleeding heart, they are beautiful flowers, um, how useful it is when you're experiencing a transition in life or a change in your life or the loss of a loved one because you are so overwhelmed by your broken heart you are unable to carry on with the rest of your life and like worms it infects your whole system and weakens you and so the power of the bleeding heart is really important in this flower essence life changes um, it affects neurologic function as well again this points to um, a really useful possibly un underestimated value in life's changes for healing nervous issues and the central nervous system itself. And it has been used to treat fibromyalgia as well because it has this kind of overall sedative numbing effect. And fibromyalgia has some, by some been described as kind of, um, you know, nerve pain that has no um, rhyme or reason. You just move the same way three times and one time it hurts. And that can really, again, be helpful for a dog with SM. I'm going to encourage my sister to try giving life changes to her dogs that have SM and see if she notice, um, notices any changes in them because it is good for neurologic conditions based on what is in it. Another one, as I mentioned, that's in this is the forget-me-not, also called mouse ears in some places. Um, it's part of the borage family, and it's a very spiritual flower to connect us to heaven and earth and to make connections between heaven and earth. So if you have lost a loved one, or if you're in the middle of moving and you feel your root has been pulled out from under you, of course you're going to want something to connect you to heaven and earth and reestablish your place in the cosmic scheme of things. And Another interesting thing I learned about forget-me-nots, which I didn't know, they grow in the same places in my yard every year, and I've been really carefully digging them up and lining walkways with them because they are the most beautiful tiny light blue flowers. I really love them. Um, they are not perennials. In fact, they have very tiny lightweight seeds that are often windblown in the area where the stand of forget-me-nots lives, and so they just reseed and come back up next year. And so they are not perennials as I thought they were because they are so beautiful. And I had a huge patch of them in my garden this year. I planted just a few little sprigs in there that I rescued from the main section. And oh, they are just, they in the springtime, they are like a breath of sunshine and blue sky when you see them. They are beautiful, tiny little flowers. Um, they are, uh, for remembering karmic conditions and relationships with the spiritual world. Um, so if you have made karmic plans about what you're going to experience in this life, these will, um, forget me not, flower essences will remind you of your karmic um, plan for this life and your connections to your karmic plan. And so that's a good thing. It keeps you in line with your life's purpose. And you might lose that when you've had the death of a loved one or a move or a big transition. And in fact, um, those in the spiritual world develop a deep mindfulness of the subtle realms with forget-me-not. And it is for soul-based relationships. And of course, we all believe that our pets come to us, even people like Michelle at Monkey's House and my sister who have many, many animals. Our animals come to us in some kind of preordained way, they always seem to be our soul relationships, our soul mates, every animal. And I thought after I lost my first dog, I would never find another dog that would be my soul mate in the same way. And in fact, I was right. Every other dog that has come after that has been my soul mate, soul mate in a new and different and interesting way. And so every animal that comes to us is a deep part of our soul connections to each other. Um, and to them and to the earth and to the heavens and so forget-me-not is related to that soul-based relationship that we have. It is also often used for the death of a loved one or separation from a loved one and of course that's what happens when there's the death or a moving or a loss and so thereby horses in fact have profound relationships with their herd mates and their families that we have often ignored. And life changes might be a great flower essence to use when you are moving your horse to a new barn or if a horse is moved out of that barn, even if it's not his best friend. 
um, life changes at flower essence can really help your horse because they are herd creatures. They have deep and profound relationships with their families that will last forever if they are not pulled apart by us moving them. And so to ease that situation for them, life changes might be an important flower essence. Um, forget me not aligns our emotional and our mental bodies. It promotes a tranquil state of mind. It's great for sleeping and also to decrease nightmares and bad dreams. It's for loneliness on a soul level. And that's how we all feel when we have one of our pets transition on because we have had our soulmate with us in a way that we can feel them and touch them. And that transition when they move on can sometimes be really difficult for us to um, process. And so forget-me-not is an important part of that because it helps us um, feel a loss, a, a lack of that loneliness when our loved one passes on. It aligns our emotional and mental bodies and it is for um, helping reopen our spiritual self. So many times when someone passes away, we feel like there isn't God, God doesn't love us, we're not part of some universal plan, life is just difficult and terrible and we feel hopeless. And so Forget Me Not opens our heart and releases the fear and pain that is held in our, our deep subconscious and allows us to once again make connections. It is associated, as many of these plants are, with the feminine, with Venus, with the third eye and the crown chakra. So again, the third eye, which is here, and the crown chakra here, and we'll talk more about chakras down the line. Those are parts of our connections to our spiritual selves. They're the last chakras to shut down when we make that transition. And sometimes we are just so lost with the loss of a loved one, of a beloved pet in particular, and the forget-me-not can really help us. And even the name of the flower, forget-me-not, I mean, these names are ancient. Forget-me-not became the name of this plant because it helps you remember the good part, the spiritual connection, your soul connection, your connection to the heaven and the earth and the universal life force around us that allows us to take the big picture and get beyond the pain and suffering we're feeling in the moment. Chrysanthemums is, are also in this particular flower essence. They are ancient. They have been used in Eastern medicine since the first century AD. I mean, they are really um, well known um, for their healing powers and properties. They are loaded with B1, calcium, niacin, folic acid, pantheonic acid, calcium, magnesium, potassium, phosphorus. I mean, what is what would you want that's not in there? They detoxify your blood and calm your nerves, particularly in teas. And there are teas now that you can buy that are a simple chrysanthemum flower, all pressed up into a little ball. And you put it in a tea infuser. Usually they have these beautiful glass ones. You pour the hot water on it and you watch the flower bloom and come to life. And then all of those um, nutrients that I just read off are in that flower, in the tea for you to drink. And they are very calming for your nerves. They have antibacterial properties, including the ability to combat staph and strep, which is really important. So if you had a strep throat, um, a chrysanthemum tea might be a good thing for you. They are good for the heart and they lower your blood pressure. So of course, if you're wanting something to ease your heart in life's transitions with someone passing on or moving to a new place, you would want chrysanthemums in that flower essence because they do ease the heart. They decrease dizziness and spots in your eyes. They have astringent qualities and they're also associated with a fear of mortality. And so of course, when someone dies, a loved pet in particular, we think about our mortality and how many more pets can we have and you know how long will the next pet that we have live and you know our other loved ones in our lives and so chrysanthemum can address this sense of panic around the issue of mortality that we might experience in these situations they are also really useful for a healing crisis due to a material focus of the soul and this really speaks to the loss of a pet because many of us can get on board with the idea of our little furry friend being an angel, a star in heaven, crossing the rainbow bridge and playing with our other lost dogs. But we miss the physical feeling of them, their soft furry bodies, their beautiful eyes, the way they look at us and their cute things they do in the house with us and the way they've been for, uh, there for us through so many um, difficult times in our lives. And so chrysanthemums 
help us release that attachment to the material physical dog and allow us or kitty or bunny or horse and allow us to see the bigger soul picture and I think this is a really important thing to have in um, a, a flower essence for loss of a loved one and transition and moving and even moving you're attached to the physical place where you were and I am so grateful myself to have moved I was in a house that was adequate but it wasn't meeting my needs spiritually or even physically there was many people around everybody was mad at each other they were always in my parking places they had issues with me having clients at my house and there was no room and this new house I am in is like a godsend I think I might have mentioned here at one point my feng shui person is very learned and comes from Texas and she was in the area and I had her come feng shui my new house and she said I have so little to do it's hard for me to even charge you because I have never been in a house that is so spiritually uh, spiritually aligned with the spirit of the person living in the house and so what a wonderful gift to move to this house from my other house where it was a bit of a struggle and I knew the second I saw this house that it was a house for me and in fact Tristan was in the car and the person selling the house was experiencing a lot of life's changes she was really having a hard time with many issues and she was a horse person and she loved corgis and when she saw Tristan in the car she knew she would sell the house to me no matter how difficult that transition was and it was a trying time to buy this house but it is in fact feeding my soul feeding Tristan's soul and all these beautiful plants and flowers and nature around here on these seven acres are sustaining one another and we're all very happy here so in fact that idea of letting go of the material the physical presence of my old house which was haunted by an old woman I had a good rapport with she helped me a lot she was a great person <laughs> but oh, I had to leave her to come here to find my own purpose and my own uh, soul and so sometimes it's hard to do that and to let go of the material things that have brought us to where we are but chrysanthemum can help with that it's for soul expression and improvement of your soul and spiritual identity so of course you want chrysanthemum with you when you're making a transition either the loss of a loved one or a move because that's going to help your soul express itself in the new place and this can be a really great flower essence to use for humans and animals when you are in the military and moving to many places over a short period of time it's just so hard to get your bearings on where you are when you keep moving and moving even though you keep the same things with you the next flower essence that is in this one is everlasting pea and like the forget-me-not just the name of this plant you know that it's going to be an important one for something for transitions and loss of loved ones everlasting pea you have everlasting love in your heart for the animal that you've lost for the places you've been for where you're going in your life and you want to keep that with you just like that beech tree who doesn't lose its leaves in the winter reminds us that we are protected and we are safe always like the little trees under it the the pea they are so beautiful they are so beautiful they look like snapdragons um, and they don't last that long when you have them in your yard I've tried to plant them several times um, but this is not a great environment for them it's a little bit cold they like it to be warmer they help you find your place on earth they help you feel comfortable on the earth plane and they are indeed so beautiful that you could sit for hours just studying them and the intricate curls in the flower itself and the coloring that fades from yellow to orange to pink to white they are beautiful flowers those everlasting peas and they help you feel comfortable on the earth plane they help you form social roots and find a place where you can belong in the world because of their clinging vines that reminds us of our searching out and reaching for the help and support of others we have birds flying by and so that's a great thing to have in your life when you have lost a loved one or moved because you need to create a new social network when you move and after the loss of your pet when my horse died I knew I wasn't going to have another horse and so I had to reach out to find a new place for myself in the world of horses because I was not going to be a horse owner anymore so I had to really work on establishing my relationship to horses as a horse healer and not as a horse rider and a horse shower and so everlasting pea would have been a really good flower essence for me at that time 
It helps you find a place where you belong in the world. It bridges this transition and the relationship between body and soul, like so many of these in this flower essence. And we see that again reflected in those clinging vines growing, growing up from the earth plane to the spiritual plane. And again, reminding us of that connection between body and soul. They fix nitrogen in the soil, and in that way they also, like the beach, bring air to the soil and nourish the soil and nourish the plants around them. And several other plants in my garden do that as well. And it is really important to remember our roots, especially when we're in a transition from the loss of a loved one or a move. So the everlasting pea is a really great one to put in a flower essence for those situations. Um, and they are often used after a move in particular. So in Hawaii, when someone passes away, as Linda has told us, we don't talk about them crossing the Rainbow Bridge. What we say is they've changed their address. So it's very interesting that the everlasting pea is particularly associated with moving and is in this flower essence called Life's Changes because really when someone dies, they are just changing their address. They're in the spiritual realm as opposed to the physical realm and they just are in a different place. They're still there. Many, many people recount hearing, seeing, feeling, knowing that their just lost dog is still with them in a very profound way. And I know many people whose um, parents or grandparents have passed away who have saved their lives by stopping them in their car or something has happened that has really helped them from the other side. And so this everlasting P is a really important reminder that when someone changes their address, they're just in a different place. They're just not here where we can pet them anymore, but they are still fully with us because we have these soul contracts, these karmic relationships with these animals and people and places in our lives. And all of these flower essences in this particular one remind us of that, those important connections. So particularly the everlasting pea. It's also a really good one to use anytime you have trauma in the environment. So that would include tornadoes, earthquakes, floods. Um, when my tree came down and hit my fence, I am so reminded of this woman in, I think, Wisconsin whose tree fell into her house and knocked over her curio cabinet full of her corgis. It didn't even knock it over. It just hit it hard enough to pop the glass door open and many of her corgis fell to the floor. And my heart bled for her because I know how attached I am to my little corgis around my house and how much they have given me joy. And she was so happy that she was okay and that her corgi was okay. And she was relieved you know, that it was only the corgis that were gone, but that is a natural change in the environment. And so the everlasting pea would be a really good thing to use to recover from this kind of stress in the environment, like that tree falling out of its roots. And it, it does upset all of the trees around it. And gosh, to have some kind of meteorological event that causes a tree to fall, the whole biosphere around your house has been disrupted. And so the everlasting pea is a good one for that. And they are so beautiful. A little bouquet of them on a table can really just bring you to a more spiritual place and get you out of the stuckness of whatever is going around you that is not feeling right. So I love everlasting peas. They are really beautiful flowers. I should have my sister plant them because they would love it in her garden. The next one in this, and there are three more, is the English walnut. It has similar leaves to the beech, long skinny leaves with little branches coming out. And that has been used for psychic protection. And of course, when you are close to the edge of your own emotions and feeling vulnerable, you need psychic protection. You're feeling really sensitive when someone dies or when you've just moved, you're, you're really, you're all nerves, you're on edge, as they say in the vernacular. And in fact, in those situations, you need psychic protection to keep um, evil spirits really, um, but just negativity from entering you. And so it's really important to have that English walnut at this time when you're in a life transition. Um, it's also helpful to break links that are no longer helpful. So the English walnut is a great one to use when you're moving because I still was connected to my old house. I was going there and digging up the flowers from the garden and you know taking my furniture out gradually. It was for sale for a long time. And really, if I had 
put some English walnut around my life in that house. It might have broken my connection to that house sooner. But I do also believe that things happen in their due course. And so those ties were broken eventually to the point where I feel no longer any attachment to that house or to my life in that place. And the same can be true for us when we move or when our pets move with us. As for the loss of a loved one, you don't want to break that connection, that spiritual soul connection you have with them, but you want to break your attachment to them being in this form in order to move on. Otherwise, you can't get past that loss. So the English walnut's really good for that. It's helpful also to help us adapt to changes in life, particularly useful in rituals around the seasons and around the shift of a new year. So English walnut, and think about that, English walnuts are often in the pies and cakes that we use for Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's celebrations because we are using them to help us transition from the past into the present into the future. And so there's no coincidence in this ancient wisdom of putting walnuts in Christmas pies and um, Christmas cookies and fruitcake, of course. So like the beech leaves, they have long skinny flowers that grow. They look like very skinny lilacs, like long fluffy white flowers. And again, that reminds us that we have a long life and many branches along the way, little experiences, but we're still going along life's path. So the English walnut is another important part of life changes, flower essences. And then we got to the pussy willow, which to me was so interesting. I know so much about pussy willows. They are related to the aspen family, which are trees I just feel such a connection to. Willow roots have been noted for their tenacity to cling to life in all situations. And the leaves and bark, of course, we all know, has been used as a remedy for headaches and aches and pains for years. And in fact, the very first you know, pharmaceutical treatment we had was the aspirin, which is derived from willow bark. So willows have a long, long history of healing, really back to the fifth century BC we have known the benefits of willows and of course they grow in wetlands and I don't have any willows around here and in New England we're very cautious about bringing in invasive species but there are quite a few stands of them in my area and I think I may need a willow on my property at some point and there might be one I haven't walked all seven acres it's really thick out there um, so particularly the product in it, the uh, chemical silacean, is used for stomach ache and body pain and is what is in aspirin. And so one of the components of the pussy willow is that it awakens inspiration and hope and it softens and releases feelings of being stuck. Well, when do you need that? When you've lost a loved one and when you're moving. So of course pussy willow would be in life's changes and to help us move on, you know, it's we are not here to keep learning the same lesson and running in circles on a hamster wheel. That would be boring and we wouldn't get anywhere like that poor hamster. We want to move ahead. We want to learn and grow. And so Pussy Willow reminds us of that because it helps us stop being stuck. It allows us to feel and experience pleasure. And of course, as we know, it grows in the wetlands. So it's associated with goddess energy and water, the feminine energy, dreaming, intuition, deep emotion. And... We will see in a few minutes that the fear of the feminine is one thing that keeps us from experiencing our emotions and moving on. So Pussy Willow really relates to water and it particularly relates to the spring. That's when we see the pussies on the willows, the little catkins. And this was what was interesting to me. Willow is the origin of the word Sally, which is my name, of course. And of course, I knew always that Sally comes from the meaning in French is rushing forth. But in other ancient languages, um, Sally means an outburst of emotions, a leap into action, or a leap into expression. So it is about artistic expression and insight and aha moments and spring. And I had no idea that my name had such a long association with Willow. And in fact, Willow and Sally were inter interchangeable in ancient predecessor languages of English. Um, it relates to Demeter as well, and we remember her, hi Crow, for bringing us between life and death and reminding us of rebirth. So Willow reminds us of spring, life and death. Spring is about coming back to life after the long winter off. And Willow is especially potent during the full moon, again, because of that relationship to the feminine energy. 
it is known to be associated with dreaming and enchantment and um, bringing our emotions to the surface so that we can heal. So of course, willow is a really important part of this flower essence life's changes. And that idea of bringing your emotions forward and rushing forth in my name, all of the things associated with that, you need to cry. You need to have that exhaustion when you've been moving boxes and carrying things and painting and trying to get into your new house. And, you know, I have a friend moving now. She's been moving for three months because she's doing so much of it on her own. And she is just on a fine line of like outright exhaustion. She's got children going from a big house to a little house. What a hard time. So the pussy willow is a really important part of that and allowing our emotions to come to the surface so that we can release them and move forward. Just like in the spring, we sometimes have those freak snowstorms that come out of nowhere and release a bunch more pent up energy so that we can refresh and renew and move on. And the last component of life's changes is the Pacific poison oak, one that I found quite interesting because I was like, poison oak, what's that gonna be for? But poison oak is related to our ability to contact others through touch. So one of the things that happens when your pet is passed on is that you miss your ability to touch them. And so poison oak can help reconnect you with the feeling of touch and being able to touch another dog and think oh my gosh this is what it felt like when i petted my dog that died and this is remember these flower essences are also good for the other animals in your home who have lost a loved one and certainly tristan and i see this with one of his friends in new jersey now too he really experienced a whole whirlwind of emotions when he lost Comet. Comet was really in charge. He was really kind of on top of things. He was monitoring things. Even when he was bedridden and couldn't move much, he was still a guiding, grounding presence in Tristan's life. And when Comet moved on, Tristan just was really edgy and nervous. He really needed life's changes, and I didn't have it then. It was seven years ago, six years ago. So. This idea of contact through touch will allow that dog that's in the state Tristan was in when Comet died to bond with you, feel your touch, bring compassion back into the world after he's lost that. It increases acceptance in relationships and allows you to be vulnerable in a positive way. Isn't that interesting that poison ivy brings that out? It brings it to the surface, or poison oak. And it brings you to emotional openness and acceptance of intimate contact again. Awareness of your personal boundaries, and certainly when we're moving, this awareness of personal boundaries is important because my other house was teeny weeny and this house is big. I had to expand my boundaries out just like my friend has to bring her boundaries back in because she's moving to a little house. And it's for those who are deeply sensitive. And of course, poison oak, where I'm very sensitive to it. I, but I don't get sick from it though, like I do from poison ivy. Um, so it brings out the sensitive people. It allows them to accept their sensitive side and to accept their inner feminine. And remember, some of these other plants are associated with the divine feminine, with goddess energy. And the Pacific poison oak is a really important one to remind us of the wonderfulness of that feminine energy and that it's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to cry. It's okay to move on. It's okay to be emotional and see where you are after that because some of these other flower essences in here help us be grounded and help us move on. And the other aspect of the poison oak is that it increases our relationship with the divine mother, which is mother nature and mother earth. And that's what we need when we're feeling that loss or change. We need to connect with our roots, just like those many wonderful trees that are in this flower essence. So today we have talked about the flower essence, life's changes, and it has many, many flowers and plant essences in it that are so important. And this is called Life's Changes, and it's from the company Botanical Animals. It's available on my website and my sister's, and it is for loss of a loved one, moving, or sadness. And it is to resolve feelings of resentment, intolerance, alienation, isolation, jealousy, sadness. It brings happiness and harmony to your home and your family and your pets and their relationships with each other and to you. And so life's changes can be a really important um, flower essence to keep on hand because you just don't know when you're going to need it. I mean, so many of us um, 
feel the same experiences when we see an animal that was hit by a car in the road. I saw a young deer yesterday uh, make it through the traffic and then when I was coming home there was one that didn't make it through the traffic and so in that situation life's changes would have been a good thing for me to have on hand in my car and I think I will keep it in my car from now on just to put a little drop on my hand and again as I did yesterday do a heart hug and think what I do when I see a deceased animal in the road which is um, bless the spirit keep it safe in its next life and protect those who use this body for food and so life's changes can be really helpful in your everyday lives with your pets as well as those times when you're moving in transition or have lost a loved one and that might not be even a pet that you've lost sometimes just losing a loved one from your human world can affect your relationships with your pet so think of life's changes as a solution to many 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 of these spiritual crises that we experience when people and animals around us change their address either literally or spiritually thanks for joining us today this has been sally morgan and tristan corgi for an episode of conversations with a corgi from the garden where we're looking at botanical animals flower essences it is beginning to rain and the crows are cawing and cawing and cawing to get their youngsters back to the nest and do some hunting in the rain we will be back tomorrow at 9.25 for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. We'll see you then.